one of the key things that I think in this current of things of what's going on is eventually when you really want things to change, that you can make a lot of serious change. We made a lot of serious change. You get civilian oversight, you did supervisor. All police behavior is, is governed by what we call general orders. It's like we can do this because it's written in the, that's the Bible of police work, right? There's a bunch of general orders. You know, shoot at a car, there's all kinds of things governing out of that. But, uh, to me, the key thing here with everything that's going on now is the basic general order that's going to have to somehow be addressed on both sides is the one that, and this is the one that produces all the mess, is the perception of the officer that they are in fear. That's the key one. There's not I mean, look, we, we can play with all the rest of them. And those are important, I mean, believe me. But the key one that governs police behavior is, is, and I just saw this whole thing about this guy named Jonathan Farrell who was shot in South Carolina. Horrible incident, just horrible. I mean, the guy should never be shot. But in all of these cases, it comes down to, you know, I was in fear for my life. Yeah. And, and, or I was in fear for the public's life. It's not just it, not, not just your life. For the public's life, therefore I had to act. That's the key one, and I, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about that, but that's the crux of those general <coughs> orders really govern the way police work. So when somebody gets basically off from Rodney King all the way down, I don't know how they can see that. Now circumstances can determine. I mean, obviously, you can look and say, well, you know, there's no way you could have thought that. You know, how could you think that? However, you know, uh, a grand jury or civilian body can basically say, well, then the general order says, and he, and if he can prove that he was really in fear, you know, if the certain, so the circumstances, so I think the thing that, uh, that perplexes and flummoxes all of it is that, what do you mean? What do you mean? How, 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 how could you think that you were in fear? Well, yeah, so that's the, really the key, the key general or the, the thing that governs the way police act. Now, factor into that, the lens at which they see people, I mean, obviously, you know, police are human beings. So they, there's a lens that they see, you know, folks with, that they come, that comes to their own experiences. So you can, and I think all that's being, they call it bias, all that's being addressed, all being addressed. But the, I think the really key one, and we have yet to really sort of dig down deep in that one, uh, because I'm not sure anybody has an answer because the officers that do have to have be governed by something. But I, that, that's really the key one that, 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 that really just blows everybody away when the officer can say on the stand, you know, that uh, my perception was that I was in fear for my life or fear for the public's life, which made me, you know, which, which caused me to do something doing. I mean, it happened with Oscar Grant, having something. In some cases, and, and I mean, John and I go by this all the time. We know it's very few cases it has been judged to be, yeah, but even if you thought that, there's no way that could be the case. Therefore, we're charging you with.